The Sea Hunters begin their exploration on the D-Day landing zones. This was an opportunity to investigate firsthand the German Army's tactical advantage. The Nazis had long known that an attack was imminent. They couldn't know exactly when or where, but with a clear line of sight to the sea, they would spot the Allies coming. There would not be an element of surprise. A heavily layered line of defense extended well out into the sea, combined with an unobscured line of fire, meant that the amphibious troops would be sitting ducks for the waiting German defenders. The Canadian landing at Juno Beach was one of several areas where this bloody worst-case scenario unfolded. During the first hour, the chances of being killed or wounded on this part of Juno Beach were close to 50%. Here's the house. This is the house that was liberated by the uh, Queen's Own Rifles. This may very well have been the first house on French soil to be liberated by seaborne Allied forces. Okay. A hundred, maybe more than a hundred Canadians wounded or killed right here with inside of the house, trying to make this beach. Well, the Allies landed at about uh, 7.55, I guess it was, Jim, on June 6th, 10 minutes after H hour. Yeah, and the tide back then wasn't much different from what we see today. In terms of it, the exposed beach and high and low tide. The Germans had gun positions. They had mines buried in the sand. They had obstacles out there, including wooden poles set in the sand with mines on the ends that would blow the bottom out of a landing craft. This obstacle course meant that that surf line was a killing zone. Yeah. 